Father, we thank you for this Easter morning as we celebrate your resurrection. Oh God, this day reminds us of victory over death. For Lord, we know that the worst, one of the worst of our enemies and yet to be completely conquered is death in our life. And we thank you for the, for the, for the work you accomplished at Calvary. That we can say with you, that death, where is thy sting? The sting of death has been removed. Amen. And resurrection is a fact. Amen. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amina. You may have your seats. It's difficult to preach on a Sunday morning when it's cold. But I believe the warmth of the resurrection has already gripped you. And you are going to make it easy this morning. Hallelujah. Let me read. Um, I'll be reading a few scriptures for you. Remember our journey we started. And today we are on Sunday. I just want to thank God for taking us through the week. Covering the Passion Week. I, I really felt like if we missed some facts about yesterday. I was reading some posts on um, on uh, social media and people were saying, you know, Jesus is quiet today. <laughs> and uh, there was a sense of quiet yesterday, if you realize. Maybe it's because people had gone up country. But uh, I was preaching somewhere yesterday. And so I had to preach about Jesus being in the grave. Hmm? And um, I had to pick up some scripture facts and I think I'll hit on them briefly before I go into the word I'm supposed. What was Jesus doing on Saturday? I know uh, many theologians have got different opinions and that's why some, even, some of the songs we even sing Assume that when Jesus was buried, he was there in the grave. He was, he was not in heaven. He was not anywhere but in the grave, waiting to resurrect. But you know, that's not what your scripture says. Actually, when you read, and I encourage you guys to go and do a time of study, you will realize that when Jesus said, it is finished. What was that? Is it, it is finished. John 19, verse 30. He gave up his spirit. It is finished. He gave up his spirit. But the, also the Bible says, let us, let us look at these scriptures. Maybe because uh, some of you are thinking about who died and who is still alive. Let us look at John, John 19 and, and verse 30. Then I'll, I'll, I'll add on a, a scripture to give you day, day 7, which is Saturday. What is Jesus doing? And when Jesus had received his, the sour wine, he said it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. Hmm? What does that mean? 1 Peter 3, 18. For Christ had suffered once for sins, just the just for the unjust, that he may bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, uh -huh. by whom he also went and preached to the spirits in prison. So, when he says it is finished, he is made alive in, by the Spirit, and he went, he went. There was work to do. He went and he did about five things. Let me list them for you. He went, number one, he preached to the imprisoned spirits. Number two, he had, you know, he had promised, he had promised the thug that today you will be with me on parad in paradise, on which day, on Friday. So he had to take the, 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 the thief to paradise. <laughs> He had to take the thief to paradise. 
Number three, he had to obtain the keys of life and death. Revelations 1.17. He had to take captivity captive. That is a battle. Give me, give me Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9. Yarwana e magombe. Yaburi rengiri. Orunakura jo. Ndoza renunaku orusingo kuba bizi. Mubisera biokufano kuzukira. Now he who ascended, now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. Olaba, aka, na kolo lutalo, na taking a captivity captive, na be mizimu, ajayechi, echi sumuluzo chobu na muno kufa. Abudi na njiri emyoye jasi bibwa. He's busy. And I will not elaborate on this one. You write it, Hebrews 9.23. He ascends as a priest. 9.23 Hebrews. Because remember in, in, in Yul Kapar, the, 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 the day of atonement, the priest does not stand there with the blood. He has to take the blood to the tabernacle. So in Hebrews 9.23, Jesus ascends into the tabernacle to clean the original copies of things in heaven. And then he comes back. Remember, he comes back and he's declared. He's declared. It begins appearing before his, his, his disciples. Our interest today is the day of resurrection. But before we go to that, I, I wanted to, to read Matthew chapter 7. Sorry, sorry, Matthew 27. You've got five. I read again. <laughs> we are running against time. Okay, let me do it with peace. So when Jesus said it is finished, his high priestly ministry began there. Because on the cross is a lamb. He obtains the blood of ransom. And when he says it is finished, he does not mean that I'm jobless. Eh? He's not jobless. He has acquired the blood of atonement. When, when a priest acquired the blood of atonement, it meant, number one, that atonement is possible. Number three, he is now moving to another level of ministry. Now, listen to this because your theological book won't give it to you. I know what theology covers. The ministry of Jesus is complete when it touches three realms. Heaven, earth, and under the earth. Redemption cannot be complete unless the work is done under the earth. Mukulaba kwensi yomoyo, ensi te bajira banga wano we wakoma, ebi ntubi koma wano, wali wano kuka e magombe. That one we do not know what it means, but when you read, it is like defining the second heaven. Second heaven means the place where there are imprisoned spirits, and that's where Hades is. Hades, the world of the dead. The world of the dead is not hell. Because uh, now there was, is not the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the last place where even Hades will be thrown. Watch it again. So what we chifo chebaita en siyaba fu oba magombe. So betu yimba inti it is not the sepulchre. It is the world under. So it's, it's, not, it's not the grave, but the grave is the path to the world under. Give me Revelations chapter 5 and verse 3. And again, season 5 3. Revelations 5 3 says, 
no one in heaven, all on earth, all under the earth, was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So we, we do not know who is under the earth. <laughs> and I do not want to pretend to know. But whenever God addresses, he addresses three spheres, heaven, earth, and under the earth. The mission of Jesus, I know the reformed preachers would say, when, this, when the Bible talks about descending, it means he came from heaven and he came here on earth. But we have already seen in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9, that now this ascended, what does it mean? But he also descended. Hmm? into the lower parts of the earth. Muchiraba. Tali, tali kunguru kwansi. Na yene wansi wensi waliyo omrimugu. So when he is like lying in the grave, he is ministering to imprisoned spirits. And I do not want to go into that because the only place you can find that information is the book of Enoch. That's where they tell you what the imprisoned spirits are. Peter does tell you something about the imprisoned spirits. But this is the image we can build. Before Jesus ascended to, to the Father, not into heaven, because that becomes a big topic. It, there, are, there are times when Jesus says, I have not yet ascended to the Father. That is different from saying, I have not yet gone to heaven. <laughs> because it's like coming to Uganda, it doesn't mean you are in state house. You get it? I have not yet. Do you, do you, do you remember this scripture in John chapter? Um, let me see. Let me look it up here. In John chapter chapter where are you? John, I think, chapter 3, he says, I have not, no one has ascended to the Father. Chapter 3, I guess. No one has ascended to the Father, but the Son of Man who has descended. Have you read that one? I'm just quoting off my head something. No one has ascended to the Father except the Son of Man who has come down. It shows you that the Father is, where the Father is, is not the first place where you arrive. And we see, if it says, no one ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Now, John 3.13 comes after you have seen Elijah go to heaven, David go to heaven, Moses go to heaven, but Jesus is saying no one has ascended. It means there's a place called paradise where they would be put because no one goes to the Father except by Jesus. They had to wait for this dying, the, the blood of the priests to be offered and the appearance of Christ in paradise to preach the good news that they may ascend with him. And on the day of resurrection, graves opened up and he went with them to town. Amina. Let us know. But the five points, when he is in the grave, he's accomplishing priestly work in which, number one, he's preaching to spirits imprisoned. Number two, he is delivering. I just put it as a point. He has to deliver the thief to paradise because he told him on the cross, today you must be with me in a paradise. And when we say taking the, the thief to paradise, it also means he's witnessing to those in paradise that the sacrifice has been made and the promise has come to pass. Number three, he obtains the key, the key of death and life, Revelations 1.17. Number four, he sprinkles blood on articles in heaven. Number five, he takes captivity captive. He fights 
and triumphs over principalities and rulers. And number six, by default, he, he brings gifts. We do not know why he had to ascend for him to, to, to he had to descend fully to ascend and give gifts. What I understand is if you are a pastor, you are a pastor in heaven, on earth and under the earth. You are evangelist in heaven, on earth and under the earth because he covers heaven, earth and under the earth. Now, let us do some preaching about today. Are we together, you guys? Let us do some preaching about today. Uh, Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27. Let us read from verse 57. 57. Matthew 27 and verse 57. Now, 50. Uh, what is that? 56? No, I want 57. Okay. First of all, I want you to clap for the person who helped me build the, the grave. <laughs> you know, I, I realized recently that, not recently, but in the past, when we were doing education, that there is nothing as powerful as a visual aid. But creating visual aids is not easy. And you can't believe the time this young man gave out to create that, <laughs> that image. And you can't believe how much lessons he has already taught you. <laughs> Amina. Now let us read the story. Uh, the ending, ending Friday and we shall go into the resurrection. Now when evening had come, there came a rich man from Elimathiah named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. This man went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. And when Pilate commanded the body, then Pilate commanded the body be given to him. When Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb, which he had hewn out of a rock, of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and departed. And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary sitting opposite the tomb. On the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests, the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember while he was still alive, Ezimuzigamba, we remember that liar, uh, but I, while he was still alive, how that deceiver, that, that it is, said, after three days he will, I will arise. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure, until the third day, lest the disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a God, go your way, make it secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the guard. Now after the Sabbath, the first day of the week began on down, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake from heaven. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. <laughs> wow. He sat on it. Continue. He sat on it. Then I'll tell my story. His countenance was like lightning 
and his clothing were as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. I don't know how they do that. But the angel answered and he said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. He, 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 and, and he said, as he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There, there you will see him. And behold, I have told you. COVID Yesu Engal. Now, the, 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 the topic would be the last lie. Ovudimbo Vusembayo. The last lie will be worse than the first one. Now, the first lie we do not know. <laughs> the first lie could be the virgin birth. The first, some, some, some theologians say the word is not lie, but error. The first error. <laughs> the sec, they say the second error will be worse than the first error. And those interpret that the first error was not to kill Jesus early before preaching. So they say, and so be that walk all over the bed here. Yarimbi na yen e ja. E jakuban, bikubango murimba ya gamba. Tiagenda kuzukira. He lied. So if we, we, we relax, the issue of resurrection is going to be worse to deal with than dealing with the other part. Because it's going to frustrate an entire sect. The Sadducees have to close down. <laughs> it's going to determine so many things. If resurrection is possible, then salvation is possible. Come on. Now let me begin with, with the tomb. The tomb, those words are used sometimes interchangeably. The tomb is a vault, a place where the dead are buried and it is secure. A secure place. And before you, you even secure the tomb, the tomb must be secure. Huh? It must be secure. No order. Akawowo komufute kaina kuyingira muchibuga. Huh? The tomb, but the, the Jews were not using tombs that are on the ground like the ones we use. They were using what we call sepulchers. A sepulcher is dug in a rock. There is a hill here, a mountain, and you rich people get people to work and they begin to hew, to crack the rock until there is a hole going inside. So it is secure all around. Much again, your no kujeto lola, my inja, kuwanga bate mamu untemi. But you you get time and do your study of the tomb of of uh, Joseph Alimathea. This one is a small space. The tomb was almost almost a house. A full house, the tomb of Joseph El Mathiah. El Mathiah, Joseph El Mathiah, was the great uncle of Jesus. He was a great uncle of Jesus, very rich, sticking rich. And his riches, of course, brought taxation to the Roman Empire. He was a trader, trading between, as I told you, he was trading between England and Israel. You go do the study. He was dealing in tin and minerals. And it is alleged, not alleged, it is historically fact that he went about two times with Jesus to England. Between age 
and thought. And he is the first missionary to England and he built there a church which is still standing today. So he's not a poor man. Webaganti Yazimba e Kanisa e Bungereza. Chida Geza Yalina Sente Zize. And you study that he's a, a friend of Pilate. Why? Because he brings in taxes. And another thing is influential. He is part of the Sanhedrin. He's part of the ruling class. He's a relative of Mary. So when he sees the nonsense going on, remember, Joseph Elimathiah is a friend of Nicodemus. They see the nonsense going on and they, 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 there is indignation. They feel we cannot let our blood, our bamitaninis, be thrown just like that. We must give him a decent burial. And Joseph Ali Mathiah had listened to the preaching of Jesus and had been converted and he believed that their child was not a normal child. He was the son of God. So when he goes to Pilate, he says, we want to bury Jesus. Don't think burying Jesus was just come, throw someone in the grave and run. No, it was well done by the richest person. In fact, you will find, because now what am I building around? There is a question today. Who rolled the stone away? Did Jesus resurrect? Huh? There, there is a man I was reading, his name is Don Stewart. He was saying, no, Jesus did not resurrect. In fact, what happened, he was given a cheap burial. He was buried in a shallow grave and was eaten by stray dogs, leaving no trace. So for him, yes, for the Muslims, Jesus never died. There are many four, about four stories of the Muslims. They said Jesus never died. That when they were taking him on the cross, badly beaten, he did a magic and his face came off him and went on the neighbor. And they crucified the neighbor and Jesus ran to Afghanistan. There is another group which says, no, he did not go to Afghanistan. Jesus faked his death. He said it is finished and closed his eyes. And he never died. And they lifted him and the disciples made sure they bury him alive in a sepulchre. And when night came, he, he opened <laughs> and ran away <laughs> to Afghanistan. <laughs> hmm? So the, the argument... We must stop the rumor that he rose from the dead. Already for the proposals I've given you, you already know what answer you would pick. Now, Jesus is dead. Dead after two days of not eating, being badly beaten to disfiguring. He is dead because even in his side, he was pierced by a spear to his heart and all the blood was out. He is dead because we see him being brought down on the cross and we, from the cross and he has bled from more than seven areas, from his hands, from his feet, from his head, from his side, from his back, he's bleeding, leaving no drop of blood. The Bible says, my blood which is poured out. Oguyika. So there is no chance that the person they are burying is alive. And now, if he is alive, still he would die in the process of burial. Because it is said he was wrapped in cloth. Eli Mathiah 
wrapped him in cloth. And the study I was reading, the, it is said he was wrapped in, uh, wrapped and spiced. They put, what are they called? Aromas, ma, and alloys, alovelas, and ma. Bamuiwako of wawonga webazinga. And the total roll and arovela, the things used for burial, were almost 70 kilos. So he's totally wrapped. And on his face, they wrapped a napkin and also wrapped his head. So if he did not die on the cross, then he died of suffocation. Then they carried him. Well, the Bible says Elimathiah buried him, but it doesn't mean that he was alone. He's a rich man. Sometimes they say, Gundi, Ababa Deo Kuzika, Waba Deo Katikiro, Tejida Gazanti Katikiro, Yazis, but his machinery. Are you with me? So they buried Jesus. This boy did a very good job. There are even clothes in here. They buried Jesus and put him in that sepulchre. Then I'll tell you, who, who can help me? Come. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will help myself. If... Move, lift this and put it on the entrance. Come on, help me. Hmm? It is heavy, but that is not even the size of the stone. Put it on the entrance. Ah. So, his, it is sealed. The next, now when it, he was put in that grave, he is already helpless. He is already helpless. If you are talking about a, a, an, a person who is alive, there is chance, there is no chance that they will come out. It is sealed. I'm sorry it's not blocking all the holes, but I want you to get the picture. Eh? Now, you will read again the designs of the graves. The one who, who did round stones, it is only rich people who did round stones. But there, there would be a hole down here. When you roll it, it sits in and becomes like a padlock. So you cement, or you tighten the lower part, and you also seal on the top. Nothing goes out. Secure. Are you getting it? Kati mkama wafe, ba muzika montana, eri sophisticated, ya mugaga. E chitangeza, e sibawo, ye gala. But the Pharisees did not sleep. They said, Peter, James, and John, and the other people, may, we may be here when they are busy digging and removing the big stone. Now, the Roman, sorry, Pilate, he's told that, you know, we need to make it secure. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Nyeza! Siba wa nyere! So now, what it meant actually that the Romans had to come and add on a seal. That, that one, I do not know what they did. Some say there was a band Basiba, they, they sealed from there round to here. And they stamped with a signet ring, just like Revenue Authority does. Secure, immovable. No one can, can move the stone 
Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were watching the burial on the first time. And they made sure that it's secure. Then the day after, the Romans have secured the grave. There is no chance for resurrection. All for a theft. Theft is from outside. Resurrection is from inside. Huh? Secure from both. I was in Kenya and I went near, I went to the grave of Chinyata. You know, if Chinyata resurrected, the guards would kill him. Because there are 24 hours marching around his grave. Jinyata Najayaka Kono what? Now this is what happened. They asked for a guard. A guard is a team which will guard. And they were given 16 guards. Binobi Nana Bisomye Kuram. Baba wade Baba Waba Awa Kumi Kumi na Mukaga. Sixteen guards to guard there and not in shifts. Not in shifts. I read and it says it's not in shifts. Now each guard was to guard a space of six square feet. Bodi mukumi akuma square feet mukaga. Kati. Aba kumi kumi na mukaga okweto lola entana. Ngabudi omomu wade square feet mukaga. Ulira. No one doses on the guard. Teri kweba kila kumukomu. Because ultimately when Pilate says guard and you sleep on the guard, you are killed. And you will love to know that the guard which was put on this grave, one of the guards was Longinus. Would you get a Longinus? Longinus is the guy who pierced Jesus in, in the side. His guard was the one on duty. <laughs> huh? You will enjoy that. Go read. Longinus with 16, with 15 others were on duty that night. No sleep, watching through the night, checking whether the seals are on. Six square foot. Semani nandi baje yaba tu kumi na mukaga buri omune mupumira square foot uze. No laba obu kumi obu gazi webwa riko. Teddy toyinza kuita manju, toyinza kuita muluji, toyinza kuita kubagad, toyinza kuzukira. And see a Jacola Chona Okuziza Katonda Chea Lagira Naya Katonda Chea Lagira Chija Kutu Kirida Hallelujah All around Med Secure. I think my time is running. Yeah, I'm still, I'll use some more minutes. Do you get the picture? Do you get the picture, Christians? Secured place. God's marching around. One thing they are fighting, there should not be a resurrection. If a resurrection comes, it will be the most difficult thing to, re to deal with. Now, the women, thank God for women. Easter Sunday, those women did not sleep. Bazika Yesu Kurokutano Naye Nebata Matida Nebagamba Yade Almathia Asize Arovera Ne Ma Arapinze Bia Yesu Bina Kuchira O. Yukira Kurikom Kazo Yari extravagant. Mary. 
e ya muyira kalosa ndo za yagenze mu kibuga na agula yo tani endala agamba wo na yesu wali waina kuba bulosa she did not sleep and they wake up now on Sabbath, the first day, when the week began, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Tweba zamokama nate oraba chala. Now they were coming and they were talking to themselves. Agam, bino tubi guze. Now my tebabu did have a sajjantibaji. Kubanga... That stone, who will remove it? And they are talking this without knowledge that in the night they even deployed a Roman security. So they have three problems to deal with. But they think it is only one, the stone. And they are wondering, who will remove the stone? Now, for the Muslims, that is hard. Because they, when they are teaching, they think that the tomb of Alamathia, they get an image that the tomb of Alamathia is a small tomb. No, it's not. It's a big room. So they, they think, how were the women going to enter? But the women were determined to go and enter. I don't know how they were going to do it. They went. Kubanga, projects only open up when you are moving. They went by faith. And behold, as they were arriving, there was a great earthquake. Huh? Ga, 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 ga. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven. I do not know how this glorious picture looked like. The angel came hmm, and rolled back the stone. <laughs> I don't know how. Uh, I wish it was rollable. He, he rolled it back. Katiba no cheba sindika echo chikadi board. Si ginger. He rolled it, sat on it. Huh? Now look at the effect. He's rolled it, he has sat on it. And the countenance was like lightning. And his clothing white as snow. And the gods shook with fear. And they became like dead men. Now, let me, let me add on this because you do it in your study. Some people say the angel was rolling the stone that Jesus may resurrect. But you know, Jesus was beyond limits. When he was resurrected, he was beyond limits. The proof is when he came out of the grave clothes, the clothes in which he was buried, he, he literally evaporated through them. Because he was not in the clothes then undoing them. No. The Bible says, they remained where he was folded. He literally came out of that limit. He evaporated out of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. The glorious body he had, he, he, let, me, let me take, tell it the way I believe he did. He, he just walked through the walls and went to town. Yafulumabufulubi but something was going to be difficult. Jesus walking out of the tomb with the stone not being moved. 
people would have always thought that he's still in the grave. Hmm? So the angel appeared and <laughs> rolled it, sat on it, and listened to his words. The angel answered and he said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He went. He left. There is no weapon fashioned against you that can prosper. No bondage that can stand. When Jesus says, I want you out, you will be out. When Jesus says, I'll deliver you, he will deliver you. Whether there is an army, whether there is whatever, God can still perform miracles. He is not here. He is risen. Yagese da tali wano. Atemu liyoke mutandikenga okukumba buli macha okukabi la kuntana. Tali mu. Tali mu sirikala inza gana mazukira. Tali jinja li inza gana mazukira. Yesu muramu. Nemu nyumba yo in your house when you are locked in your room, in your lonely place, crying in your grief, sorrowful in your grief. Jesus cannot be stopped. He will reach you wherever you are. There is no limit. Come on, hallelujah. He is not here. He is risen. He said, come and see the place where the Lord lay. Moje where... Nama ingiza munda. Tali huu. Muku umida buwelele. Ah, na yoga langoli imba. Pasta wangere ya imba. Pasta kaiwa. Na imbo limba. Enfu funevu. Bije munta na yange. Enfu funevu. Bije binta ize. Enfu funevu. Bije munta na yange. Semanyi. Yesu. Yam firi ranze ena ya linzu kiza nange yazu Hallelujah. Ndi mfu mfu mudirete, mfu mudirete. My friend Kawesa, may God bless his soul. Pastor Kawesa died in a car accident. In his will, he wrote, "When you dig my grave." Do not cement it, but dig and dig and dig. Paka we muko. Mosi me. Monsule yo. Amada. Mubirekere nzene yesu. I will come back. Monsule yo mairo lukumi. Musime futi meka. E chikulu olu nakuro kuzuki na bweruja. Oli no kuvayo. Obo ya gala. Obato ya gala. Kubira yesu engalo. We will be back. Whether the world seals, whether the politicians do what, whether religious leaders do what, we remember that. I do not know how that day will be. I've imagined many things. I used to think, I used to imagine. Over Chiriba Chitiang Habana and Giba Mazok Soma. Nagendo Glava. Hallelujah. Would you rise to your feet and give God a clap offering? Chiri bachitia. Chiri bachitia ngatulaba abagenda ngafena tutumbira mubanga 
tugenda olaba kurude no waliyo patu eri waliyo jese eno ngamwe namubuka ngamugamba chitufu ya gamba tulizukira olwa lero tuvude mbafu gamba koti haleluya we shall rise we shall rise again we shall rise again Em fufu nevu bije montana yange Em fufu nevu bije bintaize Em fufu nevu bije montana semani yesu yampiriranze oyo ya lizu kizana nge damu em fufu nevu Em fufu nevu bije montana yange Em fufu nevu stop me from seeing my mother again, my father again, my brethren again. Nothing can separate us from you. Nothing, not even death, not even death can hold us back. For you will take your children to yourself. This day, we celebrate your resurrection and we rejoice in our hope that even after death, there is life again. Thank you for the things we remember this week. Thank you for Easter holiday. Thank you for this moment of reflection. And we know that we shall give testimony of great things that you have accomplished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>